Hi everyone, welcome to Math 350 Mathematical Software with your host, Dr. Ryan Tully Doyle, which is me. I'm very excited to be teaching this class. Mathematical programming is one of the things I'm most interested in implementing in uh, undergraduate classrooms. And I think that I have the opportunity to help you build up uh, skill with one of the most important things that a math major or a math minor um, or anybody interested in the use of mathematics in the sciences can do, which is to investigate questions with a computer. So the goal of this class is you should be able to walk up to a computer and answer a question about anything you're thinking about mathematically. You might not be able to prove it, but at the very least, you should be able to gather evidence for or against whatever question it is that you have that you're thinking about. So who am I? So before I talk about the course, I'd like to talk a little bit about who I am. So my research area is complex analysis and operator theory, which you can think of as infinite dimensional linear algebra. And these are areas that are very theoretical. And yet, even in the course of my study in these very theoretical areas, many of the questions that we investigate, we gather evidence for by the use of a computer. So mathematical programming is intrinsic in much of research mathematics. Not only is it obviously uh, useful in research mathematics, but numerical mathematics and applied mathematics are built off of the computation of mathematics with a computer. So I'm very interested in putting programming into every single math course that can support it, which is pretty much all of them. And I know that because I've taught almost every course in the undergraduate curriculum. So from pre-calculus all the way up to graduate courses. So I have a lot of exposure to the ideas in those courses. And so I'd like to think that if you come to me with a question about how to use what we're learning in here in the course that you're taking, that even if I haven't seen directly how to do that, that it should be easy for me to connect my knowledge of the courses that you're taking with my knowledge of mathematical programming. Using what we're doing in here and other courses is a very powerful way to reinforce what we're doing in here and to expand your skills beyond what we're going to cover in this curriculum. The last thing I'll say is I am a Cal Poly graduate, so I, I came out of this program, and programming was an intrinsic part of the way that we were taught to approach mathematics because it's an intrinsic part of modeling. And that attitude that problems can be investigated with a computer to gather evidence is a very strong part of what it means to be a Cal Poly math major. So what do you need for the class? You're going to need the book, which is Mathematica, a problem-centered approach by Ruzba Hazrat. Um, make sure that you get the 2010 edition because the 2015 edition adds a chapter and changes a bunch of the exercises. And the mistakes that exist in the first edition actually give us the opportunity to learn from the mistakes in the book by correcting them, which is built into the homework exercises. You're also going to need a local copy of the Mathematica programming language, and there's not really a way around that. There are cloud versions of Mathematica, but they don't work anywhere near as efficiently and you lose some of the abilities that you have when you have the program installed locally on your computer. And you can install Mathematica on an Apple, on a Linux-based computer, or a PC. So it's sort of platform independent. You're going to do that through the IT department's uh, software request. And there's more detailed instructions for that on the Canvas page. The last thing you're going to need is to get your hands dirty and code some math, some willingness to do that. This is a class that is going to require that we do things. And doing things that are new is hard and requires some struggle. If you're not struggling with the material, either you're a brilliant programmer or you're taking the easy way out and looking at how the book does things a lot of times. The value in this class comes from the effort it takes to take a problem in mathematics and translate it to a problem in computer programming. So the structure of the course is pretty typical. There will be homework consisting of Mathematica notebooks weekly. There are weekly quizzes. There's one exam. There's a capstone project, which will cover a deep and complex mathematical question, but broken down into little pieces so that we can investigate, explore, and make a conjecture about a complicated mathematical question, something that approaches the level of a real research question. And then there'll be a final exam. The exam and the final will, bo will consist both of the answers to handwritten questions, which will be submitted as PDF files, and the answers to programming questions, which will be uh, submitted as Mathematica notebook files. Okay. There'll be more information about this as we get closer to those things, the exams. But with the quizzes, exams, and final, that is the assessments for the course, because this class is asynchronous, 
my philosophy on that is I should give you a window of times when you can take those assessments and then a time limit from when you start the assessment. So I might open a quiz on Friday and collect it on Sunday or set it due on Sunday. And you can take it any time in between Friday and Sunday. But once you start it, maybe you have 30 minutes to complete. The time limits are there specifically to make sure that these assessments are tight in scope. If I didn't have time limits, I could ask enormous exams. So I think students tend to prefer more constrained exams, but with uh, time limits involved. So what are we going to do in here? Well, we're going to build our mathematical programming, and we're going to understand something about how the mathematical language specifically works. But some of the areas that we'll touch on that we've seen in our earlier classes include things like number theory, calculus, and differential equations. And so this is some example of what the code looks like in Mathematica. In fact, Mathematica's prime uh, characteristic that we care the most about, it's, mo its strongest characteristic, the thing it does better than any other algebraic uh, or computer algebra system, is it has the best symbolic engine of all of them. And so what that means, if you look at the differential equation down here at the bottom, we can put a differential equation into d solve, which just means differential equation solve. And what comes out is something that looks like a symbolic solution to the differential equation, just like you would have gotten if you had done it by hand. Now, this is not a math course in the sense that we're learning a new area of math. So I can't assume anything other than the prerequisites it took to get into this class, which is why I'm just showing you number theory, calculus, and differential equations. We're also going to talk about vector calculus. We're also going to talk a little bit about linear algebra, especially matrix algebra. And we might do some work on partial differential equations or systems of differential equations. If you have questions about deeper areas of math or courses that are further along, say complex analysis or real analysis or modern algebra, you should ask. Those of you that are in those courses right now or plan to take them in the future would be well served by seeing how Mathematica extends to those areas. I just can't require it because I can't assume that everybody in the class has had group theory, for example. But if you want to see how group theory works in Mathematica, I would be happy to talk about that when we get there. So what does the course look like in a given week? You're going to get two or three of these little video lectures where I will be on screen with a Mathematica uh, presentation. This slides for this presentation are actually written in Mathematica, so this is executable code. For a given lecture, I will I will build the lecture in one of these notebook, presentation notebooks, and then I'll post on the Canvas page so that you can download it and use that code in your, um, in, in your own work or work through my examples or modify them. Um, there will be a lot of drop-in office hour sessions, and that's supposed to simulate the experience of being in a computer lab. In a computer lab environment, I would be in front of the room. You could, I could walk around. You could ask me questions. If a student asked a question that was interesting or deep or touched on some complicated point with Mathematica, then we could stop and talk about it for 10 or 15 minutes before you went back to your work. And I'm going to try to replicate that with the office hour structure and with the Slack channel that I've set up for this class as well. So between the office hours and the Slack channel, I want you to think of this class as asynchronous but not um, but, but interactive. I want this class to be interactive. And that means that as you work through your exercises, you should ask questions about them. You should ask questions everywhere. And your questions actually will probably lead to more videos being created about those specific questions. There's a lot of subtleties and complications in working in programming and mathematical programming that I may not hit in my lecture. But if, if a student asks a question, then it's very easy for me to prepare a response to that that covers that case and all the different places and subtleties it touches on. So I would like this course to be interactive, and I'm inviting you to uh, make it that way with me. So the last thing I want to hit on before I let this video go is that this course sort of embodies the motto of learn by doing. This is how I learned to program in mathematics, and it's how I hope to guide you into learning your own mathematical programming. So you're going to learn how to program from this class by wrestling with problems. And you should expect it to be difficult because the way that you think about a math problem when you're solving it by hand is different than the way that you think about a math problem when you have to implement it in a computer program. And that's a skill that has to be learned. So if you're stuck on something, start small. Understand what's happening on the small scale and then build that example up by coding around it a little bit at a time, making sure that everything works as you build it up. And when I teach the coding part during the lectures later on, 
That's how I'm going to work as well. We'll identify a small core that you know we need to work on and understand. And then once we have that working, we'll build out the more of what we need around it. Okay, That also helps debug, right? If you're trying to figure out why your code doesn't work, well, if it's small and it's not producing the results that you expect, it's very easy to see where the mistake is. If you write gigantic chunks of code and you don't, and it doesn't work the way you expect, well, good luck figuring out where the problem is. So I'm going to, once again, before I finish, encourage you, please participate in the Slack channel and ask lots of questions. Come to office hours and ask lots of questions. Work with each other. Set up study groups. Work together on these programming exercises. Now, you can't do that on exams and quizzes, but on the homework, on the part where you work through how these questions work, there's a lot of value to be gained in developing answers or in comparing your answer to other people's to see all the different ways you could think about a question and how you can put that into a mathematical programming language. Okay, And ultimately, I would really hope that everyone in here is committed to struggling with this stuff. The value is in the struggle. That is, it's in the act of trying to figure these things out, in the difficulty of figuring these things out, that you actually learn how to do it. So the last thing I'll point out is, if you are looking at a particular command inside Mathematica, Mathematica itself is also happy to answer lots of questions. Any command you want to know about, you can just put a question mark in front of, and it will happily answer that question for you. Like, so I say, what does the sum function do? Oh, well, it evaluates the sum. And Mathematica has extensive documentation on their web page that actually gives you example code that you wor can work through as well. And that leads me to my last point, which is the internet is an enormous resource for working in a programming class. There are lots of examples of how to do things. There are questions replicated millions of times about every single possible question that you could have in this course that you can find in various places. That is a resource I am happy to have you use. In fact, I encourage you to use. But I would like you to work first, figure out what it is that you don't know, and then turn to Stack Exchange, or then turn to the Slack channel, or then turn to your friends, or then turn to me. Try first, and then after you've tried and you see where the difficulty is, then turn to other sources. And once you have that idea, go back and try to figure out on your own. So I think that goes along with how I think you should approach the course, which is as you work your way through the textbook, and you should be working your way through the textbook, the assignments are going to be to do every problem and exercise in each chapter. The way the book is set up is as you scroll your way down through the chapter, there will be problems which are solved by the author and exercises which are not sort of stitched throughout the chapter. You should have your Mathematica notebook open as you go through the book so that you can solve those problems and exercises as you step through, right? You should interact with the book as well in the way the book was designed to do. Then most of your homework will be done. And plus you'll know that the tools that you need for a particular problem are right around where that problem was asked. All right. So I'm looking forward to interacting with you. I think this class is going to be a lot of fun. I've been looking forward to it. And uh, you should expect another video from me shortly. So take care.